Smiley is actually, we will turn liquidity into on-chain option and derivatives, so the so-called DVP, decentralized volatility product, because our idea is to create a new kind of primitive that allow us, protocol users, anyone in building in, uh, in the DeFi ecosystem is like uh, sharing with every, anyone wants to in, improve the, the space, the possibility to create new values out of the liquidity providers. I mean, this would help us like to edge the risk exposure. So because, and on the other side also have like uh, the possibility to benefit out of the impermanent loss. Style podcast. Hi, and welcome to the Deus Ex Dao podcast. I'm your host, Lude. Just a quick reminder that nothing said in this podcast should be considered financial or investment advice. Today, we're going to speak to Arbit's Room's up and coming all star, all Italian team, Smiley. Welcome, guys. Just to kick things off initially, maybe you could give us a, a, a little intro about yourselves and who the team consists of. Hey, hey, hi everyone. Hi Luke, thank you. Thank you for your time and for this opportunity. Hi, it's Albiwara here, one of the co-founders of Smiley Finance. With me, we have Tony, another core team member. Uh, so let's just start with an intro about myself and all the rest of the team and why we jumped into the, the, the DeFi ecosystem, let me say. Most of us comes from uh, traditional finance, so it was like a natural swing for us for, to find a more, a more innovative space to, to live in, let me say. So uh, about myself, I spent, let me say, part of my career doing traditional finance, mainly M&A and equity capital markets, uh, with a focus in uh, on European countries and Asian countries. Uh, spent like a few times like on uh, on a VC working on blockchain, so in the deep tech space, so where I get more in interested in saying what's behind like all the tech stacks that has been built so far. And while I was doing all these, I was into the crypto space as, let me say, a freelancer. I was working for myself, trading like some crypto at the beginning since 2017. Then since 2020, I started like study the, study the DeFi ecosystem because I was like super attracted by how the, the let me say, technology can overcome, let me say, problems from the traditional finance that have been there like for more than 100 years and no one was taking care of. So this is why I was super attracted by this ecosystem. So uh, just talk about like all the other co uh, core team members. So the other co-founders like uh, Tempesto and Metadata. Tempesto is the, is the mind behind uh, Smiley because he's the one that we used to trade like since 2017 in crypto, spent like five years doing uh, uh, option trading and volatility trading in an edge fund and then in international in, in investment ba banks. So is the quant of, uh, of, of, of Smiley. <laughs> and uh, then we have Metadata uh, that is like the CEO of Smiley, uh, working mainly on the product side with the tech guys that uh, they know each other like since like high school. So they are very close friends. And, the, the, and so they are, let me say, super keen on working together. So the, that's why, let me say, the, the tech team and Metadata uh, were used to work together in a previous startup, tokenizing real asset. So they are very, very, let me say, into the blockchain ecosystem because they entered in 2016, 2017, uh, working on a, a solution for B2B purposes on uh, for institutionals, and then moved like since 2021 full time on the web free space. And then we, with us, we have uh, Tony. Uh, I don't know if he wants to to talk yeah, a bit sure. about himself and and uh, Lark Sadon, so the core team uh, that join us, let me say, since the launch. Yeah, indeed, indeed. So uh, thanks, everyone. Um, it's uh, grateful to, to be here today. Um, so yeah, uh, my name is Tony. I've been uh, in uh, the Web3 space uh, for a long time now, since uh, 2016, 2017. Uh, I've been uh, working for a bunch of, uh, um, of Web3 startups uh, before actually meeting the, the guys over here in, uh, in, uh, in Italy, IRL. I was uh, really uh, like astonished, uh, you know, to see that actually like, we had, uh, you know, such a cohesive team, such a you know strong team uh, here in Italy, uh, where the ecosystem is actually developing, uh, 
and um, and yeah, I've uh, you know I'm taking care of uh, you know like the uh, the partnership side, uh, so everything related to integration, uh, and also together with LARP Zion, which is uh, you know more taking care about the community and the growth aspect uh, of Smiley. And uh, yeah, we're very excited, uh, you know, to to work on this. Um, so yeah, like very happy to be here as well. So a funny story yeah. about us. I mean, I met my, uh, I met Metadato during the Master of Science, and uh, we we became like strong friends. And then we said, okay, once we need to do something together, and we always discussed about it. And uh, now that one one year and a half ago, we decided to move uh, to move together and building Smiley. So I mean, we 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 know each other very well, uh, even with. Uh, with Tempesto, we met like three years ago. We started becoming friends. The same with uh, with Tony and, and everyone. So I mean, a, a core value of Smiley is that we we are first friends and then we are like collaborators and uh, colleagues. Yeah, we are we're quite uh, different from the usual uh, remote first startup. So it's uh, quite uh, you know like a novel thing to see in Web3 actually. <laughs> Oh, that's yeah, good. and this is super and surprising for everyone because I mean, in, on one side we are super cost efficient, and on the other side, I mean, we we are we are eliminating the risk of having like uh, the lack of a let me say an essential resource because they just they receive an offer from another product call or from another company and so on, so it decides to drop. So this is like uh, one of our point of strength. Ah, that's very good, and it sounds like you uh, can all catch up and have a bit of uh, banter and some team building as well. Um, so that's nice to see, and a, a little bit uh, different to what we usually see within uh, the Web three space. So I guess with um, a few cycles under your belts, and you've seen DeFi summer and everything grow from from where it was with the LP and um, like high high yielding farms and all of the the primitives that came initially you've um, managed to see some some gaps in the market or some issues in the market that need to be solved or problems that need solving. So could you give the audience a bit of a um, overview of what Smiley is and what you're aiming to solve within DeFi? Yeah, sure. So let me just, with, let me say with the very, very beginning, because we started working on Smiley since like, uh, it's more than one year out that we work. We did like several reiterations to find, let me say, the best solution out of it. So the first things that we identified when we 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 were into the the five ecosystem was the fact that uh, the the core building block, let me say, the core piece into the five, the entire the five ecosystem are liquidity providers because it's like you say the fuel or of 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 everything in the five. So we started with the concept of okay, liquidity providers as a core piece, but are they let me say compensated in the proper way? So what what's going on there? So we deep dive into the DEXs and uh, all the let me say way to provide liquidity mainly it was like uh, it was like uh, december 2021 so there was there were not yet like uni 3 for example so the things that we identify is that uh, i mean the payoff and uh, if you act as a liquidity provider in the end you you are having some kind of risk exposure that uh, that seems to be like uh, similar to an option seller so in the end your payoff is uh, concave so you are always gam short gamma and suffer let me say volatility and uh, or are penalized by the swing in volatility so this is let me say the first thing that we identified and uh, the main problem for this was the imper was and is still impermanent loss so that actually is the difference between uh, uh, keeping your token into your portfolio instead of providing liquidity. And we realized that most of the time, based on our historical analysis, the fair yield that you should receive as a liquidity provider for the risk taken was higher than the one that was provided for the DEXs. So there was this, let me say, missing component into the FI ecosystem that was like, if we uh, create, let me say, a kind of new primitive that is a convex native payoff, so that we identified as the opposite of the impermanent loss can create, let me say, uh, interest and also make more efficient, less fragile than the entire DeFi ecosystem because you are compensating and you are not anymore wasting, let me say, some of the value that is uh, seated there. Because if you give the possibility to to have a concrete use of, let me say, of the out of range liquidity now with the use of the three or with like, uh, or the, or if you consider that we, we, we mathematically define the liquidity provider as uh, option sellers. So actually, another thing that you can create is like uh, this way to create option out of the liquidity, creating a, a new market and all the value wasted because they are like, it's full of option seller, but there are no option buyer. 
can overcome, let me say, some, some of the issues that uh, we have identified at the very beginning when we enter into the space. So actually what Smile is, Smile is actually we will turn liquidity into on-chain option and derivatives, so the so-called the DVP, decentralized volatility product, because our idea is to create a new kind of primitive that allow us, protocol users, anyone in a building in, uh, in the FI ecosystem is like uh, sharing with every, anyone wants to imp improve the, the space, the possibility to create new values out of the liquidity providers. I mean, this would help us like to edge the risk exposure. So because, and on the other side also have like uh, the possibility to benefit out of the impermanent loss. So at the very first beginning, what we identified was uh, the natural, let me say, uh, solution for this was like uh, something that we created like uh, in uh, last summer. It was last summer, yes, we used to fork the other protocol, creating this lending and borrowing market for LP token. That was, let me say, a really nice solution uh, if there was not, let me say, Uniswap V3 overcoming and getting all the TVL in, uh, not all, but the majority of the TVL. So that solution was, was like uh, a natural fit. It was like easy to adopt. However, we identified before the launch and before launching the test and that there were like uh, some kind of issues there. So the first, first of all was like, uh, it was not possible to apply these to Uniswap V3, Tradejour V2 and all these, let me say, new uh, solution for providing liquidity. The second one was that if you create like this lending and borrowing market in the end, you are draining the liquidity, the, the liquidity from that pool. So actually you're increasing the risk for the liquidity provider in the end. So on one side, you are giving the possibility to some users to benefit out of it. But on the other side, probably the ratio is not like uh, never positive for liquidity providers. So that's why we decided, we decided to reiterate and redesign the smart contract from scratch since October, thanks to also the, the, core, the lead investors that, uh, that support us on, say, on product thinking and so on. So I'm speaking about like new order and outlier venture, especially. And with them, we redesigned something that was like uh, ready for, uh, first of all, retail, ado retail adoption. And second one, like that was super flexible and ready and composable for uh, any kind of release. So now we are expecting what will come with the Uniswap with four, for example, but we are ready to tackle that. So as of today, Smiley is like, uh, that's my vision and mission is to create this kind of primitive and allow anyone to create decentralized volatility products in order to allow the DeFi, DeFi ecosystems to be ready for scale up in a proper way. Because as we know, in traditional finance, the derivatives market is even bigger than the equity and the bond market. So in these terms, we do expect the same trend to follow in, um, in the DeFi ecosystem. The only things to, to, to tackle here is the fact that uh, in traditional finance, the majority of traders are uh, professional traders and not retail traders. Here we have like the opposite, the opposite uh, the, the opposite, because in the end, the majority of the traders here are retail one and uh, not experts. So the, the a core things that we need to do when we are working on it is also to educate uh, the community and the entire DeFi ecosystem of what are derivatives and what are the risks out of that. Yeah, excellent. Thank, thank you very much for that explanation. So you, you mentioned a few things there that I'd like to dive into, and maybe one will be the pivot away from the Aave style um, LP token, which we um, have seen in potentially some competitors or some similar pro protocols to yours that are also trying to tackle the same issue. So if you can just um, dive into why you've chosen a synthetic asset, I su suppose you covered it a little bit there, but also what options does this give um, Smiley in the future by having synthetic assets rather than um, just separating the LP tokens into a vault? Yeah. Okay. So we opt for the synthetic approach for two main reasons. The first one is that, is that maintain enough flexibility to adopt in any kind of DEX and, and create like any kind of DEX payoff. The second one is that it's easier to attract, let me say, <clears throat> user in this way, because we have done like 500 plus interviews during these months. And we just realized that with the, with the arrival of uh, Uniswap V3, actually if liquidity providers were like, uh, more institutional instead of retailers, because retailers were like uh, not anymore providing liquidity there because it was too much complicated for them. Because you have always to re, 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 you have always to manage your ranges. You have to avoid to be out of range. You have to select the right range and so on. So many solutions uh, arrived there for supporting this uh, problem for them. 
and uh, so we decided to let me say on, on one side to pivot into something like partially synthetic because it can be more attractive for degen and uh, can be like more uh, ready to scale up in a proper way with any solution provided by Dexis. And on the other side, because uh, creating the, uh, the, the, the lending and borrowing market for LP token, as I was saying, can create like uh, increasing volatility in the market. Because in the end, you are like, if you are opening like a long gamma, uh, op, a long gamma like payoff uh, into, into a lending and borrowing platform for LP token, you are subtracting all that liquidity into the specific pool. So actually, <clears throat> The problem is that the liquidity will have a swing in volumes and TVL like uh, immediately. So the APY will, uh, will for the DAX needs to re readjust, and uh, we are not sure that it will readjust like in a prompt, proper proper way. And uh, in the end, uh, I mean, for uh, this this mechanism is creating like an increase in volatility, as I was saying. So, ending that, you are in, you you can like uh, if the let say the the amount is consistent you will create, let me say, a swing in the pricing of, the, of that specific token. So in the end, you are increasing in permanent loss. So this is something we come out when we identify like uh, what we can do with protocol, protocol on liquidity and how we can, let me say, support uh, them to, to buy in permanent gain to avoid permanent loss for that. And uh, with this mechanism, actually, the solution was like uh, not super helpful for them because in the end you are subtracting your own liquidity and you are like just uh, benefiting of the impermanent loss that you're creating out of yourself so it's uh it was like uh, not a super game in the end moreover with a partially synthetic approach the cost efficiency will be maximized because in the end what we can do is like to allow users to edge uh, or speculate of the out of the impermanent loss uh, with like a very high leverage so for example uh, also 500 times or even sometimes also 1000 if you bet on a directional side so if you say okay i'm betting that the token will just move up and not move down and the one in permanent game just up instead of just down so the bull and bear scenario will be another solution that is easy to 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 adopt in a, with this partial synthetic approach while if we stayed with the previous approach was difficult and impossible to reach moreover as we are planning let me say to create an option for any kind of token so an, a really new market market for options like that as of today you can let me say trade like mainly bitcoin and ethereum and few other tokens this could be a new novel and something that you can't do we, without a partially synthetic approach because the things that we are able to do is to have like because we have like something called like liquidity volatility engine that is like into the smart contract and able to calculate the impermanent loss and all the risk, let me say, mechanics behind. And is able to target liquidity both on the impermanent gain, on one side on the impermanent gain, but more like in the future, we'll be able to create like portfolio of options because in the end, impermanent gain is just a portfolio of options. So we can split these impermanent loss, decompose it. And while we, while, uh, while we will create the impermanent gain, we can create, let me say, options. So single side options, so call and put, or strategies such as straddle and so on, uh, and this can be, be uh, can, this can be possible with a partial synthetic approach in a very cost efficient way and easy to adopt for uh, to adopt for every token. And on the other side, the last but not least, I mean the problem of the there is also a technical problem that uh, we overcome with this partially synthetic approach, and is the fact that Uniswap V3 and uh, Trader Joe, for example, and all the ones that are not using the custom formulas anymore doesn't give you, uh, didn't give you like uh, any more tangible LP token, but NFT position. So that means that actually it's difficult to create a lending and borrowing market for NFT position because they are not fungible. So we overcome this with the partial synthetic approach. So in a nutshell, these are the three main, let me say, angles why we decide to opt with this approach. Very nice. So it sounds like um, it gives more sustainability or more optionality, I guess, to who the LPs possibly will be as now the liquidity will be staying in the pool so that opens it up to protocol owned liquidity where it's in in the best interest for them to keep the liquidity in the pool of, of the owner of that liquidity and it also also gives other optionality with um, using the partially synthetic approach to um, utilize this as to basically um, create single-sided options and then these can be used elsewhere so you can almost recycle this liquidity um, into multiple different products. Very, very nice. Um, so I guess speaking on, we mentioned slightly there protocol and liquidity, but um, I've seen on the, the V1 
um, of Smiley, of the current product, you have the real yield vault and the impermanent gain vault. So I guess this needs um, an LP on one side and a trader on the other. Could you prob could you please go into a little bit more detail on who you think um, these LPs and traders will be initially and who you think potentially um, over the, the course of the product's life cycle, who, who you think the, the end users may be um, in, in the future? Yeah, thank you so much for this question. Actually, it's very interesting. And I think that the liquidity side of the story is the major problem for every protocol in the space because attracting liquidity is like uh, the most important part. So let me just focus first with that. So real yield, uh, as of today, real yield will be like a separate vault for each token, for each pair, let me say. But we are discussing like new solution of uh, finding like always like a easier way to provide liquidity because our aim with liquidity provider is to create like a, a, a new a new way to to have like the possibility to provide liquidity in the simplest way that you have ever done. So actually, our idea is to create the of the real yield is to have like a super clear payoff, super clear APY, and super clear risk. And then you act like uh, behind that because you know what are your risks, you know what are your, let me say, returns. And so you are willing to provide liquidity, even though these numbers are not anymore like uh, similar to the, what we experienced during the DeFi summer. So we are not uh, proposing like liquidity with 300% APY, 1000% APY, because we know this, uh, this system is not, let me say, sustainable. So we want to have like, first of all, like uh, retailers that stop to provide liquidity because it became too much complicated. And, but they are like, we say, still have like uh, some token, especially like stable coin that are seated there and they want to make them like uh, have, have some returns out of that instead of uh, keeping that seated. So this is the first and say user we are imagining into Smiley. So retailers that are willing to provide liquidity because they have like liquidity uh, seated and unused. But they want to have, let me say, a concrete risk payoff uh, on what they are uh, uh, what they are uh, providing liquidity. So not any more like uh, super complicated stuff like uh, in the DAXs or like uh, in other protocols. Moreover, to attract them, we are also evaluating the possibility to create like some Genesis pool or some pools with multiple tokens. So this could be, let me say, a new idea. Uh, that is still, let me say, super confidential still under discussion, but uh, because the, the main goal is to, let me say, allow users to have like uh, a super clear idea on what they are providing liquidity and it should be super easy. Because uh, in, in, our, in, our, in our, let me say, mind, the liquidity providers, especially retailers, need to, need to have like, uh, need to have, let me say, everything explained in the proper way. So this is some, uh, something we're discussing in the short term for liquidity providers. In the medium long term, we do expect for sure to have liquidity from other protocols. So for example, DAOs or like uh, DEXs and so on. Uh, and this will uh, allow them to pro provide, let me say, or an edge to impermanent loss in the case of DAOs and so on. Or if you are like a DEX, the possibility to compensate some liquidity providers that are out of the range and not compensated. And moreover, for aggregators and so on, and other kind of protocols, the possibility to have a new uh, source of APY that is different and, and potentially a bit decorrelated with the, with the others. So these are, let me say, in the medium term, and businessing like all liquidity providers will be, first of all, retailers, then protocols, and um, more, and uh, in the longer term, even hedge fund traders and uh, market makers that are willing, let me say, to have long term exposure and. Uh, defined uh, with defined risk and, uh, and and the rewards on the other side traders i mean there are two class of traders at the very beginning we were focusing just with the sophisticated traders because we, we talked about option derivatives portfolio of option and so on so it's not let me say something super easy to understand for our retailers even for me even though i started finance in the end so uh, we were focusing on institutional however as you may know i mean uh, institutional are not here yet and are not here to test like new launched products and in the end you let me say you are not focusing let me say in the right way if you don't have a way to attract DGEN and retailers so that's why we design and uh, simplify let me say all, all, what, all our offering in order to allow everyone to have like a clear view and understanding of what does it mean trading in permanent gain and when I can make money out of it when can I edge and how do I have to do what I have to do to edge the 
the impermanent loss eventually. So in the very first beginning, our user will be like uh, retail traders. We are working on uh, like some educational content, both more sophisticated, like uh, academic research paper that we have published, more with like uh, Twitter space or disco stages in order to educate them and let them understand and be ready for uh, for the next DeFi summer, how to, to treat the derivatives in the end. Very, very nice. Hopefully, hopefully this summer is the next DeFi summer, which would be very mm -hmm. nice. Um, so speaking of retail traders, that's probably myself. And I thought going into your ongoing trading comp, I'd be able to um, have a few wins, which seems to be not the case. So maybe Tony, a question to you. We've noticed a, a significant uptick, I guess, in the Smiley marketing efforts and are see, seeing Smiley all over Twitter. And now there's a lot of um, demand for this trading competition, demand for Discord positions. So just if you could give us an overview on how the trading competition's going, um, who's who's involved or how many people are involved and um, potentially any good findings that have come out of the first iteration of the trading competition. Sure, sure. So uh, the trading competition was an idea that we had uh, when we wanted to create a fertile ground and a good framework for us to uh, gather uh, you know, good feedback. So um, just opening up the product and, and asking people to, uh, you know, like to, to, to test it out uh, without really like creating a real world scenario, you know, where you can actually lose or, or, or gain something uh, wouldn't have worked out very well. So we came up with this idea, uh, which I would say uh, um, is, is, is turning out to be quite successful. Uh, we are having uh, so far around uh, 700 uh, people uh, involved in the trading competition. Uh, we also had uh, both individual traders and, um, and teams. And some of the teams are, uh, you know, like uh, notable uh, protocols or DAOs uh, across, uh, you know, like the DeFi system, such as uh, Deus Ex DAOs, uh, you know, like, or, or like Y2K, uh, Trader Joe, Camelot. Uh, so those people jumped in. Uh, you know, and, and we really could get the feedback, uh, creating a real world uh, scenario from uh, highly sophisticated people uh, that are uh, very used, uh, you know, to, 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 to test out and, and, and conduct daily trades on, on the dApps. Uh, and, and um, you know, like we had some um, really good feedback so far, especially on the, on the you know, both on the product side as well as the like underlying logic. Uh, the product side, namely like UI UX, so, you know, like some things, like when you build a product, you get accustomed to it, right? So you don't, you, you somehow stop seeing things, uh, you know, um, as in, in a way in which like a new person would see uh, when, when seeing your, your app the first time. So you take for discount at some stuff, you know, and, and this really helped us uh, understand like add, uh, you know, like a vault page, or add, uh, you know, like a way to see the real time position, so on and so forth. Um, so by the way, like today, um, like we are getting deep into the second round. The first round was from uh, mid uh, March to, to, to now, mid April, uh, it was four weeks. Uh, we decided to go with uh, weekly uh, real yield and weekly impermanent gain. Uh, turned out to be good for the real yield. Uh, the impermanent gain is designed in a way in which uh, the, the you know the break evens depend uh, on on a certain factors. So in, for the second round of the trading competition, we're testing out a new feature, which is daily impermanent gain, uh, which you know tightens uh, the break even point for for the you know when you actually can make profit with impermanent gain. Otherwise, you lose the premium. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to see uh, the reaction of uh, of the traders that we're gonna have on this. So we're still gonna have a weekly impermanent gain. Uh, sorry, weekly real yield, and then we're going to have daily impermanent gain. Uh, we also reduced uh, the number of uh, available tokens uh, so that we are going to concentrate uh, maybe more activity on 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 the ones that we, we opted to go with. Um, so yeah, like um, again, it's been it's been a wild ride. Uh, initially, uh, you know, as you can imagine, uh, there have been some you know, ups and downs uh, in us trying to catch up with what was going on. And, uh, you know, like we had a lot of people actually testing out the platform for the first time, as uh, Albi was mentioning before, uh, this is a completely custom built product. Uh, so when you 
design something that is has never been designed before uh, it is of course like it's it, it's clear that you're going to find some 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 roadblocks and and some issues uh, luckily enough we were able to fix everything on time so i'm you know like the whole team is is working around the clock to make sure that everything is going nice and smoothly uh, which is has been the case uh, so far uh, and again the trader reaction has been uh, quite positive we've seen some like real numbers on again real world use case like for it to mention just one which was mind blowing uh on on a trader joe uh, in permanent gain vault for one week we have seen around 600% gains which is uh you know like it's mind boggling if you think about it and this really tells you uh the power of the design you know of how permanent gain and real yield and and are both counterparty of one another uh, but you know like you can have really high leverage in permanent gain, uh, which I think it really nailed down a beautiful design uh, that we set forward, you know, uh, for this, um, you know, and um, and yeah, so everything is again going nice and smoothly. Uh, today we just launched the uh, real yield vault, uh, and we're gonna launch uh, around uh, 4 p.m. Um, uh, CST uh, the uh, in permanent gain vault for the daily one. So I'm excited to see, you know like uh, what is going to be the reception of that what's going to be like the payoff uh, and and what's going to be the the general reception for the traders excellent i'll uh, have to put it in my calendar then because i think the uh daily impermanent game will be uh, a very fun product to test out i think because uh you, you can sort of try and time the uh, volatility a little bit better than rather than waiting for a week so that's very exciting yeah, indeed, and and also that's one thing to take into account that uh, you know, like reducing the the like reducing the the duration of of the of the vault increases the leverage even further. So you're gonna see some pretty wild leverage here, like in the range of thousands uh, x uh, for for the the, the daily leverage. Um, so yeah, it's it's gonna be wild. Like uh, I'm I'm pretty excited to see uh, you know if there's if there's gonna be some 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 profits and 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 how much they're gonna be and you know so we can further backtest uh, you know like the and, and tail of the launch strategy around that. Yeah, it's good, and it also gives a nice balance for people that just want to set and forget LP and receive the premium no matter what. So exactly like um, Alby said, with protocol and liquidity or any DAOs that will just park their liquidity there and they can earn the premium and incur the impermanent loss that they're going to incur anyway. And then it gives um, the more degen speculative traders higher leverage and sort of less um, time to have to wait for that volatility to um, speculate on, on events like we have today, Shanghai and um, CPI and all these things that are those one-off days, um, you should see some influx of fees and TVL, um, oh, sorry, and fees and trading volume, I guess, on, on those sorts of days. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Like you really nailed the point here. Like the, like the, the bias that we had, you know, like coming, especially uh, the guys coming from a, you know, deep finance background uh, was again that uh, the main interest you know, maybe was leaning more towards, uh, you know, weekly option because uh, that's how, you know, like it's, it's, it's usually done in TradFi. But then you then understand like the DeFi is completely another, you know, it's another environment. So you really have to understand and to hear the voices of your community, talk to them. Um, we, that, that's also one of the reasons why we have kept uh, the Discord private and we are keeping the Discord private uh, because we are reading every single message that is posted. We are replying to every single message that is posted. Uh, we are interacting one-on-one -on -one with every community member. Uh, we are really taking care, you know, of, of everybody who is lending a hand right now, you know, because these people are coming in and, and are helping us out to flesh out uh, what we are trying to design as one of the, you know, leading uh, primitives for everything that, that, you know, it goes into the direction of options and, and in the DeFi ecosystem in general. Um, so again, like we, we, we were listening and, and we, we, we understood there was some kind of frustration, you know, like having to wait uh, for a whole week to get expiry when you have, uh, you know, a world like, like the DeFi world where you, you can have big spikes of, of, of uh, you know, like a big price movement and big volatility swing happening in the range of like hours, you know, like it's, it's really much more intense. Like everything is overly ma magnified here, you know, so so we are now going to test this out and uh, we're going to see how it's uh, how it's going to work out and it's going to play out 
uh, of course, in the, in the in the live product, we're gonna uh, you know like provide a multiple uh, different uh, different products. It's, there's not gonna be like daily or weekly. We're gonna do both. We're gonna do more. Uh, we're gonna we're still deciding on that. We're still brainstorming on that. But again, like the training competition is a good way for us to understand uh, X works, epsilon doesn't work, or you need to tweak this. You need to tweak that. You know. So again, I want to shout out for all our beautiful community members for, for providing all this good feedback. And thank you so much, guys. Oh, very good. And, and like you said, a, a week in the traditional finance markets is like a year in DeFi. So I think um, having shorter timeframes is good. And I, and I must say, it's a credit to you, to you guys as well. I mean, in your Discord, and it's a great community that you have going there. So um, good work. I just try and stay out of the proof of pasta channel when it gets close to <laughs> dinner time um, cheers <laughs> so uh as we're sort of getting towards the end if you could um maybe give us a bit of an update on the roadmap or what the trading competition um second iteration how long that may go for and then what we're looking at for the rest of the year in preparation for mainnet launch and then uh if there's any other um alpha you want to drop or things you want to talk about um at the end of the podcast here so I'll just uh, conclude this and I'll pass it to Abby again, uh, that the training competition is going to last for uh, two weeks still. Um, so these two weeks are going to be pretty intense because we just onboarded a new batch of, uh, of people. We just gave uh, the old uh, round one people uh, airdrop in, 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 in Smiley USD, depending on the amount of transaction they did to compensate, you know, some of, uh, uh, you know, like, again, the, uh, back and forth that we had to do to understand what was the right direction on track. Like why, while we were driving, we had to adjust uh, the direction. So we felt like it was, uh, uh, you know, like uh, uh, fair to compensate uh, traders, but depending on the amount of transactions, uh, I will say this again for everybody that is listening to us, uh, that uh, uh, inactive traders uh, won't be qualified for the rewards. So uh, if you have done zero transaction, do not expect to get any rewards. Um, and yeah, like uh, this is what's going to happen for the next weeks as far as the trading competition is concerned. And then uh, I'll be if you want to take it from here and, 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 uh, and highlight maybe and then share some alpha to the guys. Yeah, sure, sure. So from here to mainnet launch, we are working like a several stream, securing some strategic partnership for sure in order to have like uh, some dedicated tools for them. But more, we are, we are also focusing a lot on the product in order to let me say offer the best way to to trade in permanent gain at, uh, at launch with like a more powerful ui and even easier to understand we also we are also working on a way to to be mobile first so for all the users that want to trade like uh, in an easy way uh, on smiley can also have like the mobile version uh, uh, when we will be on mainnet for sure and for there, from there, we on the product with the product roadmap, we will implement like the option side of the story very soon. So ideally, I'm not sure we will be ready for mainnet, but mainly, but probably like a few months after the mainnet, we can implement also that part. So these are let me say on the product side, on the partnership side, we already discussed, and on the on the financial engineering side, we are releasing. Let me say we are working on a few papers. With, uh, on the option side of the story in order to give like all the details, technical details that are needed for the ecosystem to know more about what Smiley will do and what can be done on the option trading option uh, ecosystem with uh, for cryptos. In a very, very nutshell, let me say. Excellent. All right. Well, um, maybe the last thing to wrap it up, um, where's the best place for everyone to find you? Twitter. <laughs> As this course is private, the best possible way is to follow us at Smiley Finance on Twitter, and uh, you know, and you're you're gonna be kept in the loop. And if you're lucky enough to get into the Discord, well, you have uh, partially made it already. Yeah. Otherwise, if you want to meet us in person, you can go. Or like uh, we are in Hong Kong during these days, and we will be on in Austin for the consensus. So you can, if someone will be around there, just uh, drop us a message and we can also meet in person eventually. But first of all, follow us on Twitter because everything is released there. All the details are published there. And we are active to answer also to the private message. So, yep. If you, if you go to, to if you are Hong Kong, Hong Kong now and, or on consensus, you're going to see some six smiley t-shirt 
uh, around just uh, you know fist bump us. Oh, epic! Some smiley match would be good. All right, guys, <laughs> thank you very much for the uh, the chat today. It's been great, um, very fun. So good luck for everything in the next couple of weeks with the trading comp, and um, I'll chat to you in the Discord. Cheers! Great. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for your time. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much. Ciao, ciao. Thank you. Ciao, ciao. Thanks for tuning in to the Deus Ex Dao podcast, a place where some of the most progressive and innovative builders, thought leaders, and traders in the crypto space come together to discuss all areas of the crypto industry. Whether you're into DeFi, Layer 1s, Layer 2s, NFTs, or anything in between, we've got you covered. And as a reminder, Nothing said on this podcast should be construed as financial advice or as a solicitation to buy or sell any digital asset or security. The comments, views, and opinions expressed by the hosts or guests on the podcast are their own. As always, you'll need to do your own research.